Jack and I are on Magruder Road here. This is just kind of a, I just wanted to do a little introduction. Um, we're coming down the hill, we're about 17, 18 miles into Magruder Road. And we stopped at the ranger station on the Idaho side. And they said that two days ago they opened this up for ATVs. Um, but they didn't think that any um, full-size vehicles had gone through yet. And so they asked us, uh, Jack and I are both in the Jeeps, they asked us to stop the Darby Ranger Station if we make it and let them know and then let the Darby Ranger Station uh, call them on the Idaho side so they could tell people that the road was open. So um, we might run into some downed trees, some washed out road, who knows. But if the ATVs can make it, Jack and I will typically find a way to get through it as well. Um, so anyway, this is just the, the first installment. I'll try and, and do a few of these here. The road's really not so bad yet. So uh, it's uh, still going uh, downhill. <laughs> um, the Magruder Road, for those who might not know, is the only uh, road that goes through the Frank Church Wilderness um, from Idaho to Darby, Montana. And it's about 117 miles long. Um, there are no services, so you break down or get stuck or run out of gas. Uh, you better have your walking shoes on. So anyway, we're, uh, we're still headed down here, down into the creek, down to the bottom, and then we're, uh, we're gonna start heading back up. There's a little campground coming up here. Looks like some folks have camped out. Um, there's some ATVers, so. Looks like we're about 4,900 feet is what the sign said at uh, Bargamon Creek. Just kind of a cool, kind of a cool drive. Now for anyone who's spent any time at all in the Idaho mountains, you pretty much know that when you give up elevation going downhill, you eventually have to have to regain it and that's what we're doing right now. We're coming out of a creek bottom coming back up the hill. It's uh, There's some nice vistas up here. Um, I don't know if you can see through some of these trees here, but you'll see that uh, there's some forest fire burnt areas over, old burnt areas over on the other side uh, of some big drainage over there. This is, again, this is a Frank Church, so I can't I can't tell you exactly. It's a French, Frank Church wilderness. I can't tell you exactly what drainage that is unless I stop and get my map out. Um, but we're just kind of going up a lot of to me this is this is kind of exciting stuff I like to see what's around the next corner um, to others it's uh, I guess it's kind of boring and maybe it's just one of those things that they've seen before I don't know but uh, Tess is uh, she's along for the ride and, and seems to be enjoying the stops <laughs> about 30 miles in here there's been a lot of forest fires in the Frank Church and it's kind of sad, but we've got uh, we've got some bugs, um, pine beetles that are a non-native species that are really wreaking havoc havoc on a lot of our forests, and they kill the trees by eating the material between the bark and the and the wood of the tree, and then uh, it creates prime um, biomass for forest fires, and so we have all of this fuel. Um, all of these dead trees uh, that um, that are able to, to burn readily. And unfortunately, we can't come in and clean these up. Now, this is in a wilderness area, so that's by design, but in a lot of Forest Service areas, uh, they're not allowed, for whatever reason, um, to clean uh, clean the trees up after they've burnt, and, uh, which is really a shame, um, because there's a lot of biomass here uh, a lot of uh, wood for wood stoves or chips for cogeneration plants uh, to make electricity that's uh, just not or never will be used until we change some of our laws. Now, some of this road is a little better than others and some is not so good. Um, this is going up to Burnt Knob here. My, uh, my partner is at least up and to see if we're going to crash or not. Oh yeah, this is fun. I might have to, uh, I might have to put the camera down and put both hands on a wheel for this one. This is, uh, this is quite the, uh, quite the road. That's the, uh, the area that we came down into and then came back up. 
and we're headed towards Burnt Knob right now. Jack's just, uh, he's following me back up the hill here. So we'll, we'll keep going. We got another mile to get to the top. Coming up to the Burnt Knob Lookout and uh, I'll get some more pictures once we get up there, but uh, the road's a little bumpy. I've not had to put it in four-wheel drive. I doubt Jack has. We aired our tires down to about 15 pounds and so we've got good traction and it's just real bumpy. You need to have really good tires to come up this road. Well, I'll do a 360 here from the top of Burnt Knob. Looks like we might get some rain. But it was uh, quite the trip up here. We probably are at 80,000, excuse me, <laughs> 8,700 feet. Um, and up here is the, is the lookout. I was wondering if it was getting warm. It was getting hot. Yeah. There's some lakes over here on the... I think... I think... I can't tell right offhand, but I think this is kind of the northeast side of burnt knob. I gotta be careful here. There's some loose rocks. I don't want to slip as you can probably see why. It's pretty steep. Well worth the drive. Okay, I've got to admit coming up I was on two-wheel drive but uh, going down this thing I put it in four low so I can just idle this thing down instead of riding my brakes all the way. You can see this is uh, it's pretty rocky and uh, it's quite it was quite the interesting trip going up to Burnt Knob. But uh, both made it up. Gotta make it down. And uh, by the way my GPS said at Burnt Knob we were at at uh, six excuse me 8200 feet. So I don't know what it says on the maps but that's what, it, that's what it said on my GPS. Um, you can tell by the way Jack's rig is kind of bounding around that uh, we've got some interesting obstacles here. You certainly don't want to come up here with, uh, with bad tires. Um, this, this road right here will tear your tires up for sure. cool road going down here. Jack and I have been on some wild rides but this is probably one of the best ones we've done. There's a bunch of uh, ATV folks that came up here after us um, and we're kind of surprised that we were up up here. So, yeah, okay. Yeah, this is a little rough right here. I don't know if I took the best line. So this is 117 miles of really challenging road. It's not all quite this challenging, but uh, this is fun, at least for some of us. Others, as you can see, could really care less. <laughs> 